Hello and welcome. In our sequence of videos on data pre-processing, we are going to now talk about feature transformation. So what is feature transformation? Essentially, feature transformation is the process of modifying or converting the existing features in a data set to create new representation. We've discussed some of the feature transformation techniques already like scaling, normalization, encoding, and we're going to talk about more mathematical transformations today because these play a crucial role in data pre-processing and feature engineering. Let's discuss why do we perform feature transformations. The most important point is that feature transformation helps us improve the interpretability of the data. The original data could be in any format, but applying a simple transformation could bring it to a format which is very easy to interpret for us. It aims to make the data more suitable by altering its scale, distribution, or relationship with features. For example, it's a very common assumption when you're dealing with any kind of data to talk about its distribution. And one of the most popular distributions is the Gaussian distribution. Likewise, it is very common for us to look for linear relationships between the variables. So feature transformation would help us bring the data to a state where it is more relatable, more interpretable for us. Let's understand this with the help of an analogy. So we all know that for us, us, oxygen and water are really, really important. In fact, we cannot survive. We cannot imagine our life without oxygen and water. Have you ever wondered why on a space mission, our astronauts are always looking for the availability of oxygen and water on the other planet in a way that confirms that there is a sign of life on that planet? Because that's what we understand really well. That's what we know is critical for us. So we assume if there is a sign of life like ours on another planet, they would also be needing oxygen and water. So like we cannot imagine a life without oxygen and water, in classic statistical modeling and hypothesis testing, we cannot perform any analysis without the understanding of normal distribution and linear relationships. While there could be multiple motivations to perform feature transformations, two main goals why we perform feature transformation in data science, number one, to achieve a linear relationship between the variables, and number two, to achieve normal or near normal distribution. Why? Once again, because these are the things that we understand really well, and they are really, really critical for most of these statistical analysis. So just to give you an example, when the pandemic happened, when it all started and it was growing at a rapid pace, people were not sure how to model it. But looking at the shape of the data, the way the pandemic was growing, they decided to perform a log transformation on this. Why? Because this data resembled an exponential distribution. Performing a log transformation made the data look linear. And at the initial stage, the predictions could be made with the help of this linear model. Just a simple example. We'll look into more rules relative to how do we identify different transformations in the subsequent slide. So how do we choose the right feature transformation? With the first objective that we want to obtain linear relationship between the features. Do we have some guidelines, some rules of thumb? Yes. So let's say we look at this data, which is circular, and we've divided it into four quadrants. Just like in the coordinate geometry, we have four quadrants in the Cartesian plane. This is what it is. And let's identify them differently with different colors. So let's say this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. Now, when you have a data, you are trying to predict something which is a Y variable, and you have some independent features which are X variables. Imagine this is your X variable, and this Y axis is representing the Y variable. This is how we're going to look at each of these quadrants separately. So let's say in all these four quadrants, you have different X Y relationships. This is your Y axis and this is the X axis. Let's just concentrate on the first quadrant. Now, what would help us transform this to a linear or a near linear? So the recommended transformations for this kind of shape, whenever you encounter between an independent variable and a dependent variable would be something which is X square, Y square. You'll have to transform both X and Y to be able to achieve linear relationship. Now, this square power is just an example. You may have to raise it to the power three or four, depending on the data. But this is just an example. The general transformation for this kind of a shape when you encounter is y raised to the power n and x raised to the power n. And when you do both transformations is when you're likely to witness some linear association. Likewise, if we focus on quadrant two, if you have this kind of relationship between x and y, the recommended transformations are only on x. Either you can do a log transformation or a reciprocal transformation. And I'll show you what happens when you apply these in some time. Let's move to the third quadrant. If you have this kind of a shape between x and y, you're trying to visualize them through a scatter plot. You can apply transformations on y. You can do a log y or reciprocal of y or log x and reciprocal of x. Either of these would do. 
you may not have to necessarily apply both. So you either apply the transformations on Y or you apply the transformation on X. That should alone help you achieve the linearity. And now moving on to the fourth quadrant, when the shape is like this, the recommended transformations are only on Y this time. You will apply the transformation of log Y or one over Y. This becomes a very important slide for you to remember. While analyzing a data, you may not find all the features which follow a strict relationship, which is linear to begin with. You may have to bring it to a format where you can apply a linear model to solve the problem. And that's where transformations play a very important role. Let's look at some example. So we generated some dummy data, essentially imagining a scenario which is about the revenue of a company. Let's say this is an IT company. And this IT company is trying to analyze the influence of various factors on the revenue. So for example, they're trying to look at the warranty claims. Let's say this ship hardware and they have warranty claims as well. So if the warranty claims would go up, the revenue would go down. That's the kind of trend you see. It's not a linear pattern right now, but you can imagine if the warranty claims go up, they'll eat up your revenue. Likewise, in this case, if you look at it, as the staff cost goes up, the revenue goes up. Now, this is a little contradictory, but maybe they have hired the right talent from the market. They've hired better qualified engineers and production staff. And as a result, their revenue has gone up. So one of the costs has increased, but the output, the quality of the output, the productivity has gone up and that could have helped them achieve better revenue. Likewise, if the customers churn, if the customers are leaving them, the revenue would go down. And similarly, if they invest on technology, that might be an initial investment. But over a period of time, a tech upgrade would help them gain a substantial edge over competition and their revenue would go up. So this is a hypothetical scenario. You may not get such a nice circular representation on a real data, but you get an idea. It may have some noise here and there, but these could be possible scenarios. You may not get them all together in one data. You may have just one or two or maybe more of these present. The bottom line is, what do you do when you encounter such relationships? between your independent variables and dependent variables. So let's apply some transformations. To this quadrant, we applied a transformation which is y raised to the power 4 and x raised to the power 4. We can start with 2 and we can try higher powers. Similarly to the second quadrant, we had a choice. We could have applied log x or 1 over x. We applied log 10x. 10 is nothing but the base of the log. If we don't write anything, it will be base e, which is 2.718. To the third quadrant, as recommended, we could apply a transformation to y or x. We chose to apply it to x and we did a reciprocal transformation here. In the fourth quadrant, we could do 1 over y, but we chose to do y raised to the power 4. You can always try higher powers. Just go to the format. So this is just to indicate the variations in the earlier recommendation. The classic recommendation was this, but we are trying some variation around it. And now see what is it that you get if you apply these transformations. So do you see all those circular shapes that we had on the previous slide are looking more linear to us now because of the appropriate transformation. And now you can easily fit a linear model. It it may not be a perfect linear pattern, but you'd agree this is a lot better compared to what you could see here. These are more or less linear. So transformations help us achieve linearity in terms of association of variables. And there is a lot more that builds further on linear relationships as you study modeling. Now let's move to the second objective. Transformations also help us achieve nearly normal distribution. Normal distribution is very, very important in all of data science and statistics. So we've already discussed a couple of techniques which help us bring the data close to a normal normal distribution, such as you can do a standard scalar or a z-score transformation. But here we're going to talk about two different techniques, which are a little more complex mathematical transformations, but they help you achieve very good results. The first is known as the Box-Cox transformation. The good part is these, when applied through a library in Python, would have their own intelligence to figure out the right kind of transformation. So for example, if you see Box-Cox transformation has a function which has y raised to the power lambda minus one divided by lambda. Now you may be wondering, what is this lambda? Lambda is basically a parameter that determines the strength of the transformation. How do we choose it? We don't choose it. When we pass the data to the appropriate function, say to a power transformer in case of scikit-learn, or to the library, which is scipy stats, on its own figures out the right value of lambda, which will bring the data closest to the normal distribution. So this takes the burden off our shoulders. We can just pass the data to the appropriate function in Python, and it will take care of the transformation. It may not guarantee you a perfect normal distribution, but it'll try to give you a nearly normal distribution. The limitation with Box-Cox transformation, however, is this only works on the data which has positive values. It doesn't take zeros and it doesn't take negative values. So to overcome that limitation of Box-Cox transformations, there's another transformation which is known as the Yeo-Johnson transformation. This can accommodate negative values as well as zeros. And you can see this is a modified form of the Box-Cox transformation. It has some additions here to ensure that the values, even if they go a little below zero, would not really cause a problem. This lambda is the same as we saw in case of 
box cox transformation. Let's see when we apply this to a data, what happens? What's the original state of the data and what happens when we do the transformation? So here is an image that confirms that. Look at this data. This data is essentially a right skewed data and it starts from zero. Zero is not inclusive. It's a positive data. And another data set here, which is the original data, which is negative, essentially a left skewed data, which attains negative values as well. May not include zero, but even if it does, your Johnson transformation will take care of it. So to this data, what happens when we apply box box transformation, you can see this achieves a kind of symmetry. It's not perfectly symmetric, but it does achieve symmetry. At least it significantly reduces the kind of skewness it has. Likewise, in case of your Johnson transformation, this left skewed data achieves a kind of symmetry. So these transformations, in addition to the other transformations we've already discussed, could help us achieve nearly normal data. And normal distribution is one of the key assumptions for a number of statistical procedures. Those would not even begin if the data is not normally distributed. So if you can bring your data to a nearly normal state, a lot of things might get easier for us. We'll discuss more applications of these as we move on to the case studies. But this was a small link that we definitely needed to plug in so that your understanding of the data pre-processing is completed. Hope this video gives you some clarity on feature transformations. We'll talk more about it as we begin hands-on. Thank you.